Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a beer that should be very, very interesting. It's described on the bottle as being an undescribable beer, so being my kind of stubborn Scottish self, I just thought challenge accepted. I'm going to try and describe this beer. So for this one, we are going to do a beer that is half Swedish, half English. For the Swedish side of things, we're going to head to Gothenburg, or Jutebor, I should say, in Swedish. Uh, Jutebori, of course, as I've told you many a time, is the Swedish craft beer city these days. There's a hell of a lot of things going on up there. And we're going to go to Bristol in England for the English side of things. And that, of course, is a very good craft beer city as well. So this one is a collaboration between Dugas Brewery from Gothenburg and uh, the Wiper and True Brewery from Bristol in England. So it should be a really nice beer. It's called Sweet Sweet. And um, I saw it listed on Rate Beer as like a Belgian strong ale. Um, I'm not sure exactly what style category it will fit into, but on the side here it says that it's um, a big, it's a sweet fruity beer seasoned with orange and vanilla. So really not sure at all exactly what to uh, to expect from this one. But knowing Dugas, um, it will be a very very nice beer. I've never had a bad beer from these guys. I've had some interesting beers, but never a bad beer. Um, and Wiper and True, I know, are a very high quality brewery as well. I had a really, really lovely um, milk stout from them, uh, from them, you know, a couple of months back. So very curious to see how this one turns out. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's linked to my other reviews that I've done from Dugas Brewery before, and my other reviews that I've done from Wiper and True. Hopefully, I can add more to both in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for both the Swedish beers and the English beers. This one will appear in both of those, of course, because it is half and half. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dugas Brewery first off then. So as I've told you many a time, Dugas Brewery are based in Landvetter, which is on the outskirts of Gothenburg here on the, you know, it's on the west coast of Sweden. But the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mölndal by Mikael Engström Dugge, who of course the brewery is named after. And since 2010, they focus solely on the, bre on the brewing of top fermented beers. And most of their beers, they're very, very good at imperial stouts, I would say. They've got some of the best coffee stouts, I think, that you're going to find in the world. But they've also got some really nice IPAs and also some very nice sour IPAs as well, actually. But due to the kind of renaissance that was enjoyed during in Swedish craft brewing, the brewery soon began to outgrow its um, its original brewery, and so they decided to move to Landvetter, which is a little bit closer to uh, to Gothenburg Airport as well. But the older brewery had a capacity of around 1,500 hectolitres of beer per year, and the new brewery has a capacity of around 8,000 8, hectolitres of beer per year when it first opened. But I would assume, um, seeing how much Dugas have grown, that they would have expanded that capacity a little bit since then. They brew, of course, a number of beers for uh, for different breweries. I think Electric Nurse brew a number of their beers at Dugas, and I think think also uh, Omnipoil are brewing a number of their uh, Imperial Stouts and things there as well. I think that's how Dugas actually got so good at Imperial Stouts. Um, but yeah, very, very good brewery. One of the more recognisable Swedish craft beer names these days. One of the first kind of big craft beer names that you're going to find in Gothenburg as well. But in my experience, you know, they do some really pretty damn awesome beers. And, it's, you know, they're always producing inst interesting stuff for me to review. So I always try and pick up the different things that they're releasing. So, um, so yeah, really, you know, a very good brewery. And one that I do recommend you try if you want to have a go at some Swedish craft beer. And if you want to learn more of course check out their Facebook and their uh, their Instagram and things like that but on to Wiper and True now then so as I've told you before Wiper and True are based in Bristol which is in Gloucestershire in the southwest of England and the company was founded back in 2012 by Michael Wiper and Alexander True and the brewery itself is out at St Verbera's on the north coast uh, basically in the northern part of the city but Michael is a home brewer who learned to brew using pots and pans in a kitchen and he just wanted to really experiment with different hops and malts and things like this. But since forming the company, the brewery have proved to be really popular in Bristol and they've just opened a bar which is called the Old Butcher's Bar in Bristol and this is a collaboration with the Old Bookshop as well. And you know, they're very, very experimental. They're, they're a little bit confusing sometimes because I remember 
when we first got the Wiper and True beers uh, up in uh, Glasgow, you know, they had all these different beers that had the same labels on them. They've got like a set of three or four, they used to have a set of like three or four different labels and the artwork would be different but it would be the same beer and things like that and they would have all these different beers that only had these five different labels. So you never knew when you were just looking at these beers, is this a beer that I've not tried before? You had to actually look kind of quite closely at it. I always remember that about Wiper and True but my first dedicated review that I did with them was a lovely um, milk stout and I really, really enjoyed that beer. And all the collaborations that I've had um, involving them have always been very, very interesting. And they do seem to collaborate quite a lot with Dugas Breger as well. There must be some um, very nice kind of uh, connection there or something like that. But um, yeah, one of the English breweries that I do recommend that you check out. And Bristol, as I said, is a very, very good uh, beer city these days. You know, I, I went there for a... A university visit for my to look at the teacher training programs and things like that down there and um, it was a really nice city actually in terms of cities you know maybe I should have chosen uh, Bristol but um, yeah very very nice uh, little town that and it's very close to Wales where all the crazy people live in Cornwall where other crazy people live the other Kelps um, but yeah that's all you really need to know about uh, about Wiper and True so let's get on to the actual tasting of the spirit itself as always if you want to know more you can check out their website and their uh, Facebook and Instagram and things like that as well so let's get rid of the brewery notes and let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself so it says on the side here on the one hand uh, on the one hand side this is a sweet fruity beer seasoned with orange peel and vanilla on the other hand it's also a beer that is more than the sum of its parts now pre a new precious and good sweet nectar so as I said I really do not know what to uh, to expect from this one so I think this will be a very interesting review and there you can see Nice of brilliant, you know, sort of typical um, Dugas style artwork. There you can see the two breweries' symbols, of course, and then there is the thing here tasty pastry. You always see these little slogans with the hot flower from uh, Dugas Brewery as well. Plain bottle cap on this one, 330 milliliter bottle. There is the other Dugas uh, Brewery symbol there. Not sure how well the camera's going to focus on that. There you go. But um, yeah, nicely presented beer. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. Nice smoky opening, and we'll get it out and into the glass. When you open this up straight away, vanilla and orange, you really get that straight away out of this. Very curious just to see what we actually get from this beer. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> so in terms of colour, as I say, I have no idea what beer style this is. In terms of colour and things like that, you could think this is like a, a double IPA or something like that. Um, some of the lighter barley wines might have a colour a little bit like this. But yeah, a half finger of a frothy, I would say fawn, kind of creamy coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up um, towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look, um, you know, it does look very, very nice. So yeah, uh, you know, very curious, as I say, to see how this turns out. If I hold it up in front of the light, it is actually quite a bright orange and it's quite clear as well, actually. I'm not sure how well you're going to see that on the camera, but this beer is actually pretty damn clear, I have to say. I like how this one is um, is going together. So yeah, as I say, no idea what style this beer is. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Oh, right. I think, see on the nose, Belgian yeast. That's, I think they've used a Belgian yeast strain in this. It's almost like, um, it's got a similar sort of smell to it. It's like a Belgian blonde almost, or a tripel. It's definitely, um, it's definitely got a little bit of that um, sort of golden sort of Belgian type beer aroma to it. It's got that big doughy, bready, yeasty quality to it which is interesting. That's the first impression of this. This one has got to be a Belgian yeast. And it actually, I'm trying to think, there's one of the exact beers that it really reminds me of. I don't know if it's West Mali Trippel or if it's Le Blonde, but it really, it's got elements that's making me think of both of these beers. Maybe even Triple Carmeliet or whatever it is, or however you actually pronounce that name. The aroma that's coming out of this beer from the yeasty side of things really is reminding me of that. This is, is, you know, it's one of these really nostalgia, big nostalgia hits that I'm getting from this beer. But yeah, big doughy, bready yeasty notes, a little bit of biscuity sweetness or something like that in there. 
not really much in the way of a kind of wheaty um, quality to it though, which is interesting. Um, you can pick up the vanilla right away with this one, there's some juicy oranges in there. There is a little bit of a hoppy quality as well. So, yeah, a sort of sweeter kind of grassy note to the beer. It's got a little bit of that kind of grassy and a slightly floral hoppy freshness to it. A little bit of a kind of lemony note too. Yeah, sort of grassy, um, juicy oranges. I like yeah I like how everything kind of goes together in this one it's um it's really quite nicely um it, it's quite nicely done it's it's just a really interesting aroma that um I've never come across a beer that quite smells like this you know as I say it does have elements of a Belgian blonde it's got elements of a Belgian triple as well a little bit of orange a little bit of um a little bit of kind of floral and grassy character as well. It really has that sort of either triple or blonde kind of um, aroma to it, but a lovely big Belgian yeasty note to this one too. I really like how that's all going together. Yeah, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get uh, before you get stuck into it. This one is really quite um, it was really quite interesting. So yeah, let's have a taste of this beer then. So this one is the Sweet Sweet, a collaboration between the Dugas Bregery up in Gothenburg here in Sweden on the west coast and uh, Wiper and True from just outside of Bristol in uh, in the southwest of England in Gloucestershire. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Right. That's... I like that. I'll say straight away, I like this beer. Question is, what is it? Um, you know, they're saying on this, yeah, it's an undescribable beer. I can see exactly what they mean on the first sip of this one. One thing I should have said about this as well, this was released through uh, the small Partiers in uh, Seistan Belanga on the 7th of December 2018. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the thing is, it has, oh wait, no, there we go, there we go. So, yeah, with this beer, um, when you first take it in, it takes a couple of sips just to really get what this one is going for. I'll stick with my, sort of, uh, I'll stick with my prediction, if you like, that this is, this is using a Belgian yeast, absolutely, 100%. It has an element of, um, it's using a yeast, it's using a sort of triple or a Belgian blonde yeast. It's definitely got a bit of that presence about it. With the alcohol percentage of this, it probably is more likely to be a triple yeast rather than one of the yeasts that they would use in the blonde ales. But this beer, it really is like a very, it's kind of like a Belgian strong golden ale. But there's just got some more complexities to it. Definitely the oranges and the vanilla are coming out very, very nicely in this. I think it's probably fair to describe this beer as some kind of a, it, it's some sort of triple variant or a very strong Belgian uh, blonde ale and then oranges and vanilla on top of it. That, I think, I would put it into that kind of style category, either triple or strong Belgian blonde ale. That's where, that, that's where the style category is with this one, of course. The style doesn't overly matter, but you know, when they're saying it's an indescribable beer, I'm just, as I say, I'm always like challenge accepted and I'm just like, no, this is a, a either a Belgian, a very strong Belgian blonde or a Belgian triple with some vanilla and oranges added to it. That's basically the way to describe this beer. But yeah, it's another really, really solid um, release from uh, from Dugas. Um, and it'd be cool actually, you know, if they can produce a beer like this. I'd really love to see them have a go at like a quadruple and a triple and things like that. I think that would be very, very interesting. Their IPAs that they've been doing recently with the rice brewing, uh, with a little bit of rice in the malt base and stuff, has also been very good. I wonder if they've been trying some of the, the Japanese IPAs and things that I had a few years ago where they're using a bit of sake rice in the malt base and stuff too. I always like that about the Japanese craft beers, and you'll see more of those at some point soon. But um, yeah, um, this beer for me, um, I'll give it a straight away a big thumbs up, but let's try and break this down a little bit then and see, see what, how we can describe it. So yeah, centre of your palate then. It takes a little bit of a while for the flavour to come out. It took me two or three sips 
and then straight in the aftertaste away you'll get that Belgian yeasty quality out of this beer. You can feel that nice white bready quality blanket in the middle of your tongue. On top of that there's a little bit of a doughy yeasty character in there as well that starts to come out a little bit more. It's got a little touch of a kind of clovey spice to it as well and maybe just a little bit of a slightly biscuity sweetness but really the further and further into the aftertaste that you go with this one you're getting more and more of that Belgian blonde, Belgian tripel type um, type yeasty quality in there in the centre of your palate. The yeasty and the malty notes mix um, very very well on this one. There's definitely not um, too much, there's not a caramel on this one for me, it's a little bit more of a, a, a kind of biscuity note in there and the vanilla flavours really feel like they're very infused into that whole Belgian yeast kind of thing that's going on um, but it's it's very it's a really really nice beer there. The th other thing you're going to notice about this is how oily it is as well. You can see the head has completely disappeared on this one and you know it's surprising that when it's got Bel you know one of the things you always have to watch when you have a Belgian beer is not to um, you know is not to um, kind of put you have to always watch you don't get a crazy head out of these beers but this one I'm, I'm certain this one will have at least it, it, I'm pretty certain this has used a Belgian yeast strain almost certain of it um, but yeah on the hoppy side of things there's not much of a hop presence to this beer at all actually it's really um, it's really just a very it, it's quite an interesting thing that actually it's just it's it's very very smooth on the sides of the palate and the back corner of the tongue back corners of the palate you can get a little bit of earthiness there as you come further forward along the tongue that just smooths out a little bit there's a little bit of a herbal quality there and then you've got a nice sort of um a little bit of floral quality on the front corners of the palate then round the very front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and um and grassy i would say Yeah, I like how everything goes together on this. Um, so for me, the orangey flavours, I'm interested in that. I do wonder if they've used a little bit of Amarillo in here. Um, they will have added oranges to it as well, but I would be curious to know if they've used a little bit of Amarillo. And that's one thing I would say, if you've, you have that Duvel beer, they always have a triple hop Citra. But they used to have a triple hop Amarillo as well. It was a little bit more orangey, and um, I do wonder. Just it, I've had I had a taste of that, but I've never been able to review it. Um, and the way that the oranges come out of this really remind me of that beer a little bit. Um, because if you go behind the front curve of your palate, there's a nice oily bubble and it's straight up orange. So I would wonder if this has kind of been single hopped um, with with Amarillo. I may well be completely wrong on that, but the orangey flavours as well, what I would say is you can always tell when fruit's been added to a beer because the fruity flavours kind of suppress a little bit of the IBUs and I would wonder if that's why the hoppy presence in this um, beer is almost just subdued a little bit. You can definitely pick up those nice oily fruity notes, but it doesn't have a big... Um, IBU quality, uh, an IBU character to it, this beer, and Doogie's Brewery are certainly not one that are scared to bring out the IBUs. I've not tried an IPA from Wiper and True right enough, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that either of these breweries are scared to make a, a more bitter beer, so I would think that, yeah, the, the orangey flavours in this one have been added to it, but I think it's also been hopped a little bit with um, with Amarillo, and that's what's given it. And I don't think it's mosaic or something like that, I think it's definitely more of an oily orange, which to me would indicate Amarillo. The other orangey hops, of course, that you have would be like Pacifica from New Zealand. You've got Mosaic as well, which is more like a tangerine blueberry kind of thing. You've also got a Zaka as well, which I think is an orange, a kind of tangerine orange pineapple sort of thing, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they've put some Amarillo hop in this beer. Mm. But yeah, this is a really nice one. I mean, you know, neither of these breweries are going to put a bad beer out there. Um, is it kind of Christmassy? That's the main sort of thing. I don't. I really don't know about this one. As I say, it's it's one of these very very unusual beers, but it it works and it's good, and that's the main thing that you want from it. Actually, whether it's a Christmas beer or not, I don't know. But they've released it on the um, the first of uh, I think they released it on the seventh of December, um, twenty eighteen through the small parties, if I'm remembering correctly. But it's it's a lovely beer, and you can't ask for much more than that. So I'm just going to give it a big thumbs up. And in terms of style, as I said, it's somewhere between a very strong Belgian blonde and a triple 
it maybe doesn't quite have the sort of um, cat, the slightly more caramelly biscuity flavours that you would expect of a triple right enough, um, but it's definitely a Belgian style beer, Belgian strong ale. Um, and it's also got these lovely orangey and vanilla flavours added to it. It really does work this one, so I hope that um, it makes an appearance. That's one of the only kind of downsides about Dugas is they do some really interesting things, but then you only ever get to try them once um, because they are a very prolific brewery. But that, it's a good thing in one on, in one sense, but it's a bad thing in the other sense because you always miss some of these really good beers that they do. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, definitely a full-bodied beer. Carbonation is very smooth. It really is an oily mouthfeel that you're getting from this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely a big oily mouthfeel for this one. No IBUs from this beer really at all. It's quite sweet in its malt base. There's a, there's a good bit of alcohol warmth to this as well, mainly from the Belgian yeast. At 9.5% as well, it does hide the alcohol warmth fairly well, but you get a little bit of it uh, down here and a nice sort of smooth, juicy, fruity quality to this beer as well. But, you know, they said it's a sweet dessert beer. Absolutely, you know, I can't really, you know, I can't really think what you would pair this beer with right enough, but, it, you know, vanilla ice cream or something would be uh, would be really nice to have this with. I really like how this beer uh, goes together. So if you get the chance to try it and you like unusual things, definitely have a go at it. I've been quite impressed with this one, actually, and it's cool to see that Dugas and uh, Wiper and True, of course, are starting to venture into Belgian beers a little bit more, so I really do hope that they continue with that. Dugas have a habit of doing new beer styles and then doing pretty damn well with them, so I hope that they uh, you know, they have a go at some Belgian blondes and uh, tripels and things like that. So, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one, yeah, the sweet, sweet, a really interesting Belgian-style beer from Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg and Wiper and True from uh, Bristol in England. It's it's really nice, one of the more unusual beers I've had over the last little while. So if you get the chance to try this, I highly recommend you do. I've very much enjoyed reviewing this one and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So until the next time, thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out the social media of both of the breweries involved here and make sure you try some of these beers. But slander just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. The sweet, sweet, um, sort of Belgian, very strong, Belgian blonde triple-ish type beer with orange and uh, vanilla added to it from Dugas and Gothenburg and uh, Wiper and True from Bristol in England. Until the next time, it's Slanger just now and I'll catch you guys later. School.